Hello, hello. Welcome to the Five Talents Podcast. I'm your host, Abel Pacheco. I interview the top commercial real estate investors and industry experts so you can learn from their experiences. So if you're an investor, a high W-2 earner or real estate or tech sales professional that wants to invest in real estate without having to manage properties or leave your day job, then this podcast is for you. Or if you're already investing in real estate, but you're doing it part-time and you wanna become a full-time multifamily or full-time commercial real estate investor, this podcast is for you too. You're gonna learn a ton. You will learn from real life multifamily investors and other professionals in the industry. They're gonna share their blueprints for success and I'm super excited that you're here. So I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, hello. This is Abel Pacheco, your host for the Five Talents Podcast. We are super excited yet again. I know I say this every time, but it feels like every single guest that I've had is just amazing. They're going to bring uh, so much value to you. So Mr. Jason Yerusi, Jason, thank you very much for joining. How's it going, man? Well, I'm excited to be here. It's been a minute, so I'm really excited to connect with you in person. I'm excited and happy I took my bulldogs out of the room because they would have made a ton of noise that wouldn't have been able to be edited out here. But, dude, oh, it's like awesome. Well, good, man. I've, I've uh, had the pleasure of meeting Jason this year and his, and his wife, Peely, and they are just, you know, just the mindset powerhouse of family, health, uh, financial freedom, multifamily, apartment complex, construction, all kinds of fun topics that I love talking about. So I think you're going to gain a lot of value from today's show. You want to grab a pen and a piece of paper uh, that will really help you uh, if you're taking notes. And if you're, you know, somewhere you can't, well, just tune in later and grab a pen and piece of paper, then rewind. It's, it's going to be a good one. So uh, Jason is uh, essentially, uh, like I mentioned, a number of things uh, so I'm going to let him give himself a proper education. I'm uh, sorry, a proper introduction. Sorry. But uh, to read a couple of bullet points uh, from his background, he is an active syndicator. They have about 800 units under management today. He's the host of his own multifamily live podcast. He's an avid runner, a workout enthusiast, father, and a husband. And the reason we want to title today's uh, show 100 Mile Mindset for Buying Apartment Buildings is because he has an amazing mindset that really does apply from, you know, his, his marathon, ultra marathon running mindset to, you know, buying buildings. And I think you're going to, you're going to like today's show. So Jason, let me turn it over to you, my friend. Uh, give us a proper introduction. Tell us who you are and what you're doing in, in your own words. And we'll just start a great conversation here. No, and I love that, but I, I am constantly getting an education, right? So every talk, every every conversation, we're, we're on Clubhouse talking, all I'm doing is getting educated, right? And, you know, even my little kids, right? Every day getting educated, right? Like, so it's just one of those purposes that that pushes us forward. So, but Jason Yerusi, uh, we invest in multifamily, my wife and myself, we we moved down to Tennessee a couple months ago. Um, I do run a lot, ran, I've run every day um, for probably the last couple of years now. I, I don't know, rain, sleet, snow, hot, colds, don't feel good, ear hurts, foot hurts. I just, I just run. And that's been a part, a lot of my mindset journey of just creating a consistency in my flow um, that allows me to understand that, that there's a ton of greatness in this world. Uh, you just have to understand that you, you will not have the best day every day, but you find ways to win every day and it makes every day better after that. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Uh, every single day, rain, sleet or snow, like the males get that thing out there, except they skip Saturdays and Sundays. Jason doesn't. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, I need to, I need to apply a couple of those things and just get out there. Uh, I'll start once a week is probably where I need to start. Right. And then the consistency, you know, it's one of those things that I started doing and I was never an avid runner. I played sports, but uh, back in like 2008, started uh, running and started training for marathons and grew to a couple more marathons and to some ultra marathons. But it just, it becomes part of my day because we, we all, 
we all have our days, right? And, and we, we find that little things that you could have the best day, but then you get like a thorn in your side, like random thorn. And you're like, oh, my day's ruined, right? I got a little thorn, right? But, it, but in that part, that's how most of our days and how we, how we treat most of our days, where, where most days have so much good in them. And we find ways to find the little wins. So, so I, I get up, I get up at 4.32 a.m. Um, I have a glass of water, drink a coffee, uh, meditate, and then do a few other little exercises and then go run. And I do that. And every day is a, a little bit uh, imperfect, more perfect, but I do that consistently each and every day to the point that that creates a win. So I get back and then I start having some more things that will happen and maybe they're not all perfect throughout the day, but I know yeah. that I've created wins and I can keep growing on that just a little bit each and every day. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I, I love that mindset. My, my wife's encouraging me right now. Uh, not by any of her words, but by her actions. And she has been uh, on a tear in the last, you know, several months. She's been getting out there running. Fantastic. She's uh, using the time to listen to her podcast on positivity and mindset. And, nice. and I'm, I'm usually focused on like real estate podcasts, which we talk about uh, positivity and mindset, but, you know, just hearing her, it's like, oh, this is what I learned. This is how I did a mindfulness and, you know, staying focused as she's exercising. And I was like, I, I love it. So um, that's great. To start you know, we, we, we find that no matter what, right. So, so say you had a, you close a fantastic deal, right. And that happens the day before the next day, you still have to wake up and have that first conversation with your mind. Right. Yeah. And, and, and that's, and that happens every single day. And so no matter if you have people for you or against you, none of that matters at all, because if you can't get up and have that conversation with your mind each day and prepare yourself in that way, you're going to have a hard time going. Right. And that happens each and every day. And the more we can continue to build and, you know, cause you know, my, my hard might be someone else's easy. My easy might be someone else's hard. Right. But the more I can grow into understanding what is it, this, this, this may have been hard five years ago, but now this is another part, right? Now we can start solving bigger problems, which creates bigger and better solutions. Yeah. Yeah. And I love this conversation because uh, this is a commercial real estate podcast. We're talking about buying apartment complexes, investing for financial freedom, whether you're building wealth or trying to preserve wealth, the way we implement it through multifamily as a vehicle is what we're talking about. Why the heck are we talking about all this mindset and running and, you know, getting up with a positive attitude and meditation and all, all of that. It's because you'll hear this over and over again. It's if you're going to embark on this journey to buy, you know, a thousand doors, 2000 doors, 5,000 or whatever, whatever goal you have, maybe it's just 100 unit apartment complex it starts with the mindset and your ability to say, I can do this. I am, I am, uh, you know, the, the, however you want to talk to yourself. For me, it was good enough, smart enough. And gosh, darn it. I could do it. Right. Yeah. The Saturday night live Stuart Smalley is like, that's the first person I remember, uh, talking positive, <laughs> talking about positivity and people made fun of that guy. And he was literally the butt of a joke, but, I'm like, man, that's exactly what I, you know, what I believed in. My faith keeps me in this mindset. Uh, do not be afraid. You know, I promises to, to prosper you, not to harm you. And so that is a big one for me. But I mean, all of this stuff has to be applied to what we're going to go do, which is buy this big apartment complex. How t Tell us your, the way you kind of put these things together. Why are all these mindset, you know, components relevant to commercial real estate investing? Yeah, sure. So, you know, let's take Clubhouse it's been happening a lot, right? And I, I can hear from some people's words and I just try and give little parts where like they, they're giving themselves way out. So I'm going to try to do this or maybe I can become this or I'm those other points or you hear other people like, I'm going to be this. I will do this. I can do this. They haven't done it yet, but they've, they've already put their mind in a way that they can go out there and do it. And so that next time that they get kicked in the shin. Well, I am doing this. So they just get yeah. back on there. Right. And it's a lot like new year's resolutions. Like I want to go, I don't know anything, right. I want to go do anything, but you say, I'm going to try to do something. And then that's why most fail because there's nothing in, invested in that. And so the people I heard some lady the other day, and she was so invested to, to getting into real estate because of this, to help her, her son and those other points. And I was like, this lady's going to make it happen because she set her mind right to do this. And no matter what, right? And no matter what comes in her way, she's going to get knocked down 107 times and get back 108. And with 
anything, especially like, you know, multifamily or, or whatever it's, you, you get that question. Well, how long does it take for my first deal? I was like, I don't know, maybe it'll take two years. Maybe. And then the next one takes 10 days. It just, it will take what it takes, but it's the steps of repetition and the t- steps of carrying it out. That's going to get you there. So, so the action is going to create the momentum that's going to create the results. And so some days are going to be harder than others, but if you can just keep doing that little bit of action each and every day, right? So I, you know, I have a student today, just call me, he's, he's out of deal, you know, and, and, but he's been plugging away and plugging away and just had that question. Like, you sure something? It's not like, it's yeah. just, it just, you got to keep doing it. Just keep doing it. Like it's, and then that's the, you know, luck meets preparation, right? Now you've put in the steps and for each and every of us and for running ultra marathons, right? I, I if I set my sight just on the ends, well, then most everything's going to be a letdown because I'm doing all the process with like buying an apartment building. If it's just about buying the apartment building, then I'm going to be let down because almost all the time is not buying the apartment building. It's, it's building the teams, you know, talking to your investors. It's uh, putting together the deals or, or, or uh, meeting brokers or underwriting deals or all those steps that come in place. That's the continual flow of work that you will go to, but it's that built in your mind to say, okay, I got it. <clears throat> this is something I'm learning from. So how can I get better at my questions so I can get better at my answers? So each time I can, I can shorten my route, right? Cause you know, to, for most of us to buy our first large apartment building, it, it would be like, if we're going from New York to, to LA um, through Mexico, right. Yeah. It's like, it's like something like Maybe that. Run, like, running. Yeah. 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 <laughs> not not under, on the car. Handstand, right. Yeah. Doing <laughs> yeah a for the most part. Walking. Yeah. 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 And yep. so when you figure it out, say, okay, now th- there's who's doing this well, how can we take more direct steps? And you start yeah. giving yourself that bandwidth. But then now, even on the direct path, you learn more questions to ask to get you to better answers that makes the process more fluent. So instead of walking on your hands, you're now running. Instead of running, you're now, you know, in a car. And now, okay, now we're, now we're in a plane and now yeah. we're flying. And now we can yeah. figure out better ways to do our process, better ways to get to our goals, because we know we're going towards it. And we're just doing these little things that give us the momentum to get there. Yeah. Yeah. That's so awesome, man. So thank you very much for, you know, just your insight and your mindset and and how important those things are. I, like myself, I had a limiting belief. And, well, I have limiting beliefs that I still work with every single day. We all do. The ones that I had that kept me from commercial real estate investing w- were developed when I was 26 and I read a book and it was Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which kind of like opened up my eyes to real estate, right? There's a lot of us. And uh, then the second book that I read, I, I, look, I went back to the bookstore and looked for every purple and yellow book I could find. The second one I read was The ABCs of Real Estate Investing. Have you seen Ken McElroy's book? Oh, or- yes, I have. Yeah, so great book. He's like Rich Dad Advisor series. Yeah. And it was, oh, The ABCs. So I go, this is exactly what I need. I don't have any property today. I need to learn the ABCs. And it starts with, you know, how to buy a $10 million apartment building. Mm -hmm. And I go, this is not the ABCs. This is the wrong book. I think I missed up the cover. Anyways, I read it cover to cover and it talks about building a team, uh, finding property or brokers, raising private capital, essentially syndication, how to analyze the market, how to analyze a deal how to do due diligence, how to, you know, look at everything top to bottom. And it, it, it basically I reread it now and I go, this is everything I learned in all my education and courses and every seminar I went to for the last couple of years. But there was that limiting belief that said, ah, oh, you're a 26 year old kid. You, you can't, you, you can't go buy a $10 million building. There is no way. And, and Abel, you're not anywhere near a millionaire. I don't even know why you're playing in this space. Go buy a single family house and that was my limiting belief. And then I bought single family houses for 10 years. And that was my limiting belief on my own self. And even after I told my parents and my sister, I'm going to go buy apartment buildings. Uh, and then for next 10 years, I, I'm going to go, I bought single family houses before I made the leap. So it's just, you know, that's, it's, the- you know, you know what it is. It's a, it's when your mind's ready. Right. And so it's like, it's like, you know, if someone can tell you something each and every day and until yeah. you're ready to hear it is when you are able to apply it. And for so many of us, and so I get a question a lot, like, what would you tell yourself like 20 years ago? Like, it wouldn't matter because I wasn't ready for it. Like, so like, so for me today to say, 
go do this. And I know, yeah. you know, cause I, I wasn't, I wasn't ready. Right. And maybe, maybe it'd give me more thoughts, but I, it wouldn't be beneficial to say, okay, because I'm not that person. I'm that person today based on what happened 20 years ago, what happened 10 years ago, five years ago, three years ago. Yeah. It, it's, you can't go back. You can just look at it and say, okay, am I learning and progressing? Am yeah. I learning and progressing? Yeah. Yeah. And this is, this is awesome. Uh, thank you very much, Jason. Now, absolutely. Uh, we want to talk about a couple different, let's, let's diverge on two paths if we can. Sure. Active investing and then passive investing. Cause I think we've got an audience with both people that want to learn how to uh, be better passive investors as limited partners in commercial multifamily syndications. And then those that are trying to do it, mm -hmm. uh, that mindset applies to both because uh, you know, I remember my first $50,000 check that I'm writing on my multifamily syndication I was passively, I had to turn over, relinquish all this control. And I had to get over that, you know, 112 page private placement memorandum. And then I had to, you know, talk with my wife and my wife was like, well, if we don't try it out, nothing's ever going to change. So sure. kind of had that mindset, right? Yeah. Uh, and then for the active investor, you got to, you know, you got to start taking action to get in if you want to get in. So what advice can you give for the passive investors that are trying to, you know, figure out, you know, uh, shoot, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, it's 50K, 100K, or maybe you already have a few million dollars, but you're trying to figure out how to diversify out of the stock market. You know, right. give them some insights or advice from the mindset on passive investing. Sure. I actually just had this conversation with an investor before this. It, it comes down to what do you want? Right, because because that's gonna that's gonna help determine a lot, right? So so say you have a hundred thousand dollars. What's important to you? If you put this hundred thousand dollars into a passive investment, is cash flow important to you? Is portfolio diversification important to you? Is depreciation or tax advantages important to you? Are you fine not to have cash flow, but you'd rather have the opportunity potentially with more risk to have a bigger back end? Or are you okay with development where where potentially there's no money for a couple of years and everything's going to come in one fell swoop? What is it that's going to be beneficial for you? Are you okay with a short-term hold where you just want your money to work for six months? Or would you rather not have to have the money back for five to seven years and not have to redeploy it? Um, that's going to, is, are you only comfortable close to you or would you be comfortable a thousand miles away? So you start to identify what this is because then you could speak to operators and have them, you can help them, right? And then from an operator standpoint, talking to that operator to see what's their with their business plan. Does it align with what you're looking for? Do you even like them? Right. These are these are not, yeah. you know, a couple of months. These are investments that potentially you're going to go and invest for a couple of years. So do you yeah, like yeah. that person? Does that person have a track record? And even if it's their first indication, do they have a track record that that shows who they are, right? Consistency in, in other ways or other parts of their life. And yeah. you know, I had another great call today with a guy who um passive investor looking to go move into to buy apartment books. And uh guys invested in um and you know, he's like, I just don't know much. I'm like, well, you invest in a deal. He's like, I invested in 20 something unit uh education. I was like, well, let's learn from that. And you know, so so how's it going? And he's like, you know, I'm just I'm not completely psyched because I'm not having any communication. I'm like, okay, great. So what's the first thing you do as a, as a as an active operator? You communicate with your investors. So so we do monthly emails, monthly reporting, you know, because he's like, I'm getting that from another um like single family thing, and it's great because I have that constant flow. So I'm like, okay, as an operator. Now you should do that in terms of what you're doing. You want to create the consistent flow so they know who you are. So when you have those investors in there, they say, oh yeah, um, he shows up consistently. I constantly am in a no for what happens there. And then they'll be more, we'll say, likely to want to invest with you in the future. Because unfortunately, he's a little turned off because he hasn't had much response or reporting, yeah. right? Which is, yeah. of course, a thing. And then for active, again, it goes back to what do you want? And it, it's, it's that same part. Real estate is this open ocean where you can do anything, but you can't do everything. So yeah. what do you want? And let's define it, right? So you hear a lot, like I want a thousand units. Like, well, why? Like, what does that mean to you? What's that going to accomplish in your life? You, so I give you a thousand units today. Are you, are, is that good? Like, why? Like, is that, what does that accomplish? Because you might be looking just for a certain amount of cash flow and only need 200 units, right? So, so they don't, don't get stuck on someone else's 
yeah. thought, right? Someone else's goal, figure out what your own goal is, build it back. Like I want to have this much. So I have this much net worth and this much monthly cash flow to, a, to replace my W2 job. Okay. So that's the goal. Great. How many properties would that take? Um, is it, you know, if we're looking for a thousand units, is that 50, 20 unit buildings or three, 350 unit buildings? What does that come out of there? And where do I want to invest? Do I want to invest close to me again? Do I want to invest far away? Am I interested in projects that, that are just like improving uh, properties or I'm looking for big turnarounds? And then you could start honing it in. And most of the time from the start, there's not a horribly wrong answer. The, the worst answer is not to pick anything. It's, it's pick something because you can go down that path and learn better questions, get back to the better answers and then say, you know what? Maybe I don't like this path. And then at least you've gotten yourself to eliminate one thing, right? And now you're like, okay, I don't have that anymore. And for most of us in, in anything, when we want to go try something, we're like, I could do this, I could do that, I could do this, I could do that or this over here. And we don't do anything because we just, we're, we're too many places at once. And then our mind just like shuts down. Yeah, I love it. Thank you very much, uh, Jason. This is, that's amazing. You make me think about, uh, well, first one, choosing what you want. Yeah. Uh, that alone is super hard for a lot of people to do. Really deciding what it is that you want. Uh, so uh, the, I was on a podcast interview yesterday with Kyle Marcotte and he's a 22 year old. Uh, he bought his first deal when he was 20 and he's yeah, I know like, Kyle. Yeah. okay. You know, Kyle, right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's, he's a Christ follower and, and we were talking a little bit about it and uh, he, the words that he, yo he used yesterday was he lamented in his dissatisfaction he, he was really just upset with where he was and what he wanted to do. And, you know, he was like, I don't want to go to school. I don't want to work forever. I don't, I don't want this for my life. And he, you know, really, he said, focused on the sincerity of like, I do not like this. Yeah. And that allowed him to make a decision to go off on this path of owning, you know, 500 freaking doors and millions of dollars under 22 years old, right? He couldn't yeah. even drink, but he's, buying this $5 million deal. So the, the, the point of that is like most people can't really even determine what they want or not most, a lot of people, sorry, a lot of people can't. And if you can focus on that, what it is that you really want, exactly what Jason said, you know, what is your end in mind? And that's a Stephen Covey thing, man, if you're, if you start with the end in mind, whether that's the end of your life or the end of this decade or the end of this year or the end of whatever you're setting your targets at and work your way backwards. Uh, I, I can't remember which book or what it was from, but I, I always envisioned the starting at the cap at the peak that you want to at, the, at that you want to end at. So right. whatever mountain peak and envision or, you know, project yourself on the top of this mountain peak and look back down to where you're at today project yourself there and say, Oh, realize that there's a lot of ways up this mountain. I could yeah. take the vertical straight up way with one person hooks and, you know, and, and I got my gloves in my hands and I, I have a rope. I could go free climb or I could take this long, you know, trail around the base with a group of people and it's going to take longer, but I know I'll get there eventually. It just depends on how you want to get there. Cause there's so many different paths, but until you set your, you know, till you set the peak that you want to get after, you're never going to be able to know like all the different options to get up there and, you know, just start, start there. It's great. You said case. two fantastic things among it, many is that, you know, the first is that, you know, we're typically running away from pain or towards passion, right? And those are our two points. But if you can't figure out what you want, figure out what you don't want, like Kyle was talking about, like label, what is it you do not want? right? Because then that can eliminate a lot of stuff, lead you to where you do. And then the same part about imagining, right? So, you know, where you want to be, that's usually why my most don't get started, right? So I want a, a mansion or live in an island or I don't know, $10 million, but you, it's just something you're saying, but there's no, there's no vision of it, right? And so it becomes yeah. so scary that you'll never take action. And what that will do is you'll say, 
I want $10 million, but it's, it just, it's not real enough. It doesn't mean anything to you. It's got no, no girth to it. So instead you'll retreat back to having that $9, $9 an hour job because it, even though you hate it because it's more comfortable and you're, you're used to it, at least, at least I'm good in, in, in what I'm used to, right? At least I'm good in what I'm comfortable with. Even if I hate it, I'll just stay there because it's, it's, it's better than, you know, something I fear, right? But in that front, if you make it real, just like you said in that mountain, great analysis, right? So, you know, you don't jump to the top of the mountain, you figure out what's that first step. And that first step leads it to the second step to the third, right? And so mm -hmm. my first hundred miles, if I went out there, I was like, okay, I'm just going to run hundred miles. Like your mind would shut down because I've never done it. Right. Yeah. But at that same part, I'm like, okay, um, let me just get to the first aid station and we'll figure it out. And then the next part, you're like, let's get to the next aid station. Okay. We'll figure it out. Now we're 50, 75, wherever we are, maybe I'm like, let's just get to the next tree. Okay, cool. Let's get another 200 steps. Okay, cool. Uh, let's get another 17 feet. Okay, cool. And then eventually you're at the finish line, right? But it wasn't hundred miles. It was hundred miles with 97,000. Let me just get to here and see what happens. And that's like most in entrepreneurship, right? It's like, yeah. Okay. Let's just get to there and we'll, we'll see what happens. And then you're like, okay, I made it here. Okay. Now where do we go? Okay. Cool. And you just keep going, keep going. And the road just keeps opening up. It's so incredible, man. Uh hello, hello. You're listening to the Five Talents Podcast. I'm your host, Abel Pacheco. If you're enjoying this podcast, then I know you're serious about achieving financial freedom. Are you ready to create your own path through multifamily investing for yourself and your family? then I know you're gonna appreciate our investor's guide to multifamily investing. It's titled Tackling Commercial Real Estate the Easy Way. We use this guide to invest ourselves in $93 million worth of real estate. So we're gonna show you the basic mechanics of multifamily syndications and how to evaluate your next passive investment opportunity. So the best part, if you subscribe to our podcast now, leave us a review and a rating. I'm going to give you a free copy of our ebook. So please take a moment to do that now. Once you've done that, go to 5tcre.com forward slash ebook, 5tcre.com forward slash ebook. Make sure to let us know you left a review and we're going to send you a free copy. So thank you so much for subscribing to the Five Talents Podcast. We really appreciate it. And so this is, uh, I, let's break into this because this is incredible. <laughs> it's one of those limiting beliefs that I have about myself. I'm like, I could probably never run a marathon. Well, number one, I'm out of weight. I'm out, overweight, out of shape. I need to get my butt in the, you know, out there. But a hundred miles is even like f far surpassing a marathon. So we're, let's talk about two things. Your hundred miles, you know, it, it just give us some, demystify how this actually happens. And then just like you just did, uh, but maybe a little more tactical, how many times have you done it? How many marathons, et cetera? Those, those would be great milestones for people to learn about. And then let's apply it to, you know, your commercial real estate. Cause I, I do want to know about a little bit more about your holdings and kind of where you got started and just sure. like, like you did, you didn't start with an 800 unit apartment complex. You started somewhere. Uh, so let's, let's kind of go into this. Dude, how many times have you run a hundred miles? Uh, three, uh, a couple fifty, uh, wow. a lot of marathons, some planned and some I, I'll just get out and just run a marathon for the day. And then uh, I, I'll run, you know, usually a five or six mile every day. And for for those, it's like, you know, my, my plan and I'll, I'll give you the part. So my plan for a hundred mile hour is uh, a yeah. new plan, no plan. And I'll tell you why is that my first ultra past the marathon was a 50 mile hour. And I was like, okay, it's up in Ithaca, New York. I'm like, I'm going to be all planned. I'm good. Okay. Two goals, run the uphills. I'm usually strong. Don't get your feet wet. Mile three in, it was such a steep rock. You couldn't run. I was like, okay, so that's out mile four, first of four rivers to cross. My feet were soaked from about, you know, like, oh, like 30 minutes in, you know? So I'm like, okay, new plan, no plan. Right. And that, that's like a lot is that Usually it's like the Mike Tyson thing, right? So you have this plan laid out and the second the plan's not to, wow. not to the agenda, you're like, well, I can't do it now, right? But at the same part, yeah. you say, I got a direction. Okay, I'm going to the end and I'm just going to take that step. Okay, cool. I'll get some more info, get some more, get some more guidance, right? And so I've done that a lot. I mean, even with quarantine, I did a lot of um, 
I think Jesse Itzler has that uh, uh, mile. Um, what is it? The uh, the mile a day marathon, mile a day. So I was doing. I did like eighteen marathons in the one month, and we're we're just growing. And it, you don't know you can do it until you just get out there and start doing it, right? And so for you to run a marathon, one hundred percent. Why can't you? And I, that's just literally the literally the part right there. Like, and <clears throat> most times people say, "I want to go do this." I'm say, "Great," you know. And even like pick a market. Well, which do you like? I like them all. <laughs> just, just pick one. You know, like yeah, it, it, yeah. it doesn't matter. Just start somewhere, and it will give you the next the next answer to, of what you need to do. Um, and even for apartment buildings, you know, we we were doing a, a bunch of we were doing our heavy construction, a bunch of different real estate, and we were just finding like we wanted to get back to really controlling our day. Our kids yeah. were, and we just had, uh, I just had our first son, but we were just like, wow, we're doing this, this active, like single family stuff and it's going well, but we're just creating more chaos in our day. We're just getting farther away now. Yeah. We're having less time. Right. So, so, so we want more time. We're having less time. Something's the matter here. Right. And so it took us 2000, maybe 14 or 15. We brought some out of state um, rentals, some twos, threes, fours that we were able to put together a team. We were, you know, far away, get it all done, get tenants in there. And all of a sudden check starts showing up. We're like, well, this is pretty cool, but it's not really, you can't, it's hard to scale. You start looking at that, like, oh, I'm going to have like a bunch of twos all over, all over town. And from there we said, okay, um, not, the, the thing we wanted to do. So what else is there? And we found large apartment investing and uh, really died all in, really dialed all in, said, okay, who's doing it successfully and just work to follow their steps, right? Because we're, you know, we all want to do it ourselves, but who's doing this well? And we brought our first 94 unit building. Man, that's awesome, man. So how, how did you, uh, well, everything you just said is awesome. There's so many nuggets in here. So this is one of the shows I'm going to have to probably rewind myself and get a lot of notes going. So that's really cool. Uh, the single family part of it was what I did, you know, for 10 years and yeah. just realized, man, this is not getting me closer to my uh, freedom point. My net worth was increasing and that was cool. Uh, it was nice to have a little extra uh, in, in the bank account and growing, but it was definitely not anywhere the life that I had envisioned. Sure. Yeah. I understand <laughs> that kind of led me to multifamily and multifamily syndication and passive investing first, and then uh, doing a number of active deals. Tell us about your first deal. Did, was it, have you invested passively first and then go on or were no. you active all the way? It sounds like, yeah. you, and it sounds like you had a heavy, like you said, construction background, get, get, illuminate a little bit more of this. So we, so we get it. So my, my, my father, um, we, I come from like five generations of like an Italian construction family. Right. So my okay. father yeah, yeah. back, yeah. um, almost like 45 years ago now said, you know, this carpentry thing is kind of ridiculous because anybody can just start tomorrow. So I'm going to go do this thing where I'm going to move and lift houses. And so he started that in New Jersey, uh, crazy enough. And so it's been a cool business and I, I've seen him move everything from churches to, to space vehicles, to, uh, to vessels, to, to moving tons of houses, houses from the 1600s to 2000s, lifting all these properties because of flooding. And uh, back when Hurricane Sandy happened, his business just went through the moon and he was so busy. And my, my brother was working with me. We went out there and, and helped dad and it was a lot of fun. Uh, so, I mean, a couple thousand homes we raised over the course of those years. And uh, as we transitioned into the multifamily, um, honestly, you, you don't know, you don't know. That's why you align yourself with people, right? And you align yourself with mentors because you get the big parts, like find a deal, like get a loan, like figure out what to do with it, yada, yada, yada. But it's all those little pieces in between where you say, well, how do I bridge that gap? And for us, we found the people that could keep us on that path. And it's journey where like a lot with mentorship is. They're, they're not going to, you don't need a mentor to tell you like, hey, you need to go buy an apartment building. Like you, you got that. It's those little in-betweens there. So um, we started really honing in on a market, putting together a team, talking to friends and investors about what we're doing, getting specific, talking to banks, talking to brokers. And we were able to find this uh, 94 unit. It was off market. And we offered on it and uh, we were really far away, um, but we, we offered a lot lower than they were asking. Um, and they basically countered back at our asking price. We we're like a million dollars off. And we, we ended up just saying like, this is why we're here, right? So it wasn't like we were just like shooting them in the foot. We said, yeah. this is where we could be. Well, lo and behold, we kept tracking these properties and months go by and we see it like nothing's happened with it. So we went back and I think we raised our offer like $50,000 and all of a sudden they're asked, they came back and counted like $600,000 less. And we were now at a delta of like 300K and over the course of 
couple, you know, a couple of weeks, we're able to negotiate that and get that at, at a price. Um, that was fantastic. First deal, uh, a lot of fun. Built, did that in May of 2017. We're able to do all kinds of improvements. So, so they had, you know, big in a market that's 3% vacant. They were like, uh, I think they had like 94, like 10 vacant units, all rent ready. They didn't have a, a, a leasing person who she was like watching the dog, the bounty hunter wasn't leasing units within a week. They're, <laughs> they're all rented. And each time oh, we're renting, yeah, we were walking in, uh, you know, $150 premiums just on lost lease. Cause you could walk across the street to the neighboring building, get $150 more. And so they had three maintenance guys in the property, not doing anything. So which didn't need, um, their expenses were running wild. Their utilities were out of control. We were able to put a water savings program in there, cut the water bill down to like 30%, which uh, of course gave us, I think the, the value at the time, like increased it by like 350,000 just for changing toilets. Uh, after 13 months, we refied the property, gave a chunk of capital back to investors, which was exciting. And, uh, because of the path of progress, which was not really underwritten for and just happened based on some sales and some other people coming in there and putting capital in the market. And uh, I think like mar- month like 30, was it maybe month 30, uh, we sold the building and we we actually exceeded our, our seven-year hold, uh, hold expectations in that like two and a half years, which was great. Boom, baby. Boom. Fun. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> what a great first deal and what a great way to enter. And and, uh, you know, some people right here will hear, oh, well, you know what? Jason came from this real estate family background. And so. Oh, not even so much, but I'll take confident. that out. Yeah. Yeah. It was know, they're construction, say, but yeah. Well, cons- yeah. On yeah. the construction side. But even then they'll hear that and say, oh, uh, I-, I could never do that. I, I well, it's like, hey, from- hey, oh, they come from, they-, they make tomato sauce. They must be good at making pizza. Right. It's yeah. like, it's, uh, so, you know, it, it doesn't yeah. parallel, you know? Yeah. 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 And so you, you got to be able to get over yourself <laughs> a little bit. If I could just say, it. you got to get over yourself. If you're listening, it, it has nothing to do. Jason says it had nothing to do with the fact that his family was in quote unquote real estate. Probably what had anybody in your family ever bought an apartment complex before? No, no. Yeah, it was a, it was a ton of fun. I mean, not everything went right. We had like a, an electrical surge that was caused by the city that like, like broke like, uh, like six electrical cables underground that they, they said was uh, just happenstance. I was like, that just magically happened. Right. So took out like, like eight units for a day, but we had the right team in place. We had a, there, there, um, it was, it's a pretty safe area. And there was just like a random shooting, which scared a bunch of neighbors. There was like just things that we, you know, we've got a couple hundred people living in an area, like, yeah. things happen. Right. So not everything was, you know, like roses, but it was just like, okay, the, you get the team there. Okay. Get the team in place. So things can be handled accordingly when things pop up that are unexpected. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's how these deals get done as you stretch your mind, but you know, beyond what's possible. Yes. There's going to be some issues or problems that come yeah. up that you've never thought about, never dealt with before that people around you have never done, you know, dealt with either, but you just kind of work through a problem just like any other and you go figure out how to solve it. And if you are a passive investor, so that's, that's the nugget for the active investor. If you're the passive investor and, and you are making a good look at work, you are making a high salary, a high W2, you're professional or you are a seasoned individual that has a lot of tenure in your field, wherever it may be. This is the stuff that, you know, for the most part, just invest, (laughs) invest passively, keep this high earning wage and put your money to work. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize this until uh, 2018 was the first year that I really said, you know what, I need to invest passively because I, it took me those 10 years to buy eight houses and then I b- paid for some education. They're like, this is how you become active in real estate. I said, okay, great. There I'm going to go do that. And then I try to buy 10 deals in one year. And we did uh, actually pull off, you know, eight, eight or nine transactions. It wasn't quite 10, oh, cool. but we did that many in one year. That was the same year that I had uh, as the highest ever paid at this point in my direct tech career. I had 60 salespeople. I had a bunch of sales managers and I realized what the heck am I doing? Uh, mm-hmm. Well, towards the end of my career, what the heck am I doing? I'm spending so much time, effort, and energy. I would have probably made more money at the W2 job had I put the same time, effort, and energy there. Probably got a d- second one. But anyways, that's what you want to do is like you want to invest yeah. your money and just you know have it 
in a deal like this where somebody does put in the time, effort, and energy, that yeah. their sweat equity. And that's what we're doing. We're leveraging, you know, if you if you are in Jason's deal, you're leveraging his effort, experience, knowledge, team. You're leveraging other people's money, which is the bank. The banks are, you know, giving us 75, 80% of our LTV, you know, sometimes a little higher, lower. But anyways, it's just it's a it's an amazing vehicle. It's an amazing vehicle. Yeah, absolutely. It's spot on, you know, and there's, there's many ways to win in this. It just, it just choose what works for you. Yeah. Well, good, man. This has been an amazing conversation. Uh, is there anything I haven't touched on today that you were hoping I asked about? I just didn't, didn't bring up or, or anything that would provide value for you, bring additional exposure, something you're working on, you want to highlight sure. anything and everything, man. It's, it's, uh, it's for you. You know, this has been great. I love this. So, no, every topic's been fantastic. Uh, you want to see a lot um, on some of the crazy running we're doing. You know, go over, follow me on Instagram, Jason Yarusi. Uh, We are doing a multifamily live event uh, out in June. You want to go see that multifamily live event.com. I uh, would love to have you there. Um, or just reach out. Uh, you, you get a wealth of knowledge from listening to shows like Abel here and just seeing the great stuff he puts out there. So, so thank you to you for, for what you do. This is a ton of fun. It's, it's good. It's, it's also too, cause it's great. Cause we, we most of the time we'll come to a podcast, maybe we've connected on social media and, and, but it's just, you know, through forums or whatever is the case, but now in clubhouse, you know, I, I get to know you and now we have this connection even further. Yeah. So this is awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you're not on clubhouse, there's like, uh, uh, just drop this real quick. You need, you need to go check out, uh, Jason, Yerusi, Abel Pacheco. Those are our, actually our handles. I think our names, right. Right. And, yep. uh, there is, uh, it's kind of like pod. It's just like a podcast. It's kind of like this, uh, except you can ask questions. <laughs> so if yeah. there's any questions in between, and there's maybe another 10 other amazing individuals on a panel that we can go ask questions on. So if you're not on there, check it out. Uh, you can follow any, any of us on Insta or. Uh, yeah. And I got, I think I got like five or seven invites or something that I haven't used. Yeah. So if you're out there missing an invite, just reach out to yeah. me. I'm, I got to yeah. use these things. And what's the best way to connect with you? If we were, uh, let's say one of our uh, audience or anybody that's listening and wants to invest or sure. get into your world more, you mentioned Insta, but is that, is that the best uh, place can, or is there? So you can, of course, DM me there, but Jason at your is absolutely great. We get back to you real quick. All right, cool. Uh, I think, you know, this, this has been a great, well, I'm trying to think, is there any other topic we didn't discuss because I may have you for two more minutes and I don't want to miss a thing, man. No, man, uh, this is, you know what it is, is that you got the right energy, which is great. And this is why it's so fun to be around people like yourself is that it's, it's just a good community. Right. And, and yeah, when, yeah. and if you're finding like you're stuck out there and you're, you're, you know, you just can't yourself out of mental funk. Well, just start every time, like you're in that funk, just call yourself out. Right. Lots of times we get ourselves, uh, okay. You're complaining a lot. We'll just start noticing that you're complaining. Right. Uh, oh, you're, you're feeling that start noticing you're down, start calling yourself out. Right. And you start, now you start labeling it, recognizing it. And then you start looking the other way. Like, cool. You know, so like a quick thing, like I got a ride home from a, a kid in an Uber and I was like, yo, how you doing? Uh, you know, I was coming back last night and he was like, oh man, it's real rough. You know, I, I, I'm like a thousand hours in debt on this and 1600 hours in debt on this and, uh, and uh, something, but I was just like, and the pandemics happen, all those other points. I'm like, I was like, well, and he's like, well, I just had this new baby. I was like, well, baby healthy. And he's like, yeah. I was like, are you healthy? He's like, yeah. I was like, you got this nice car. That's cool. You got a house. He's like, yeah. And you, you sleep in the bed. Yeah. You got clean water. Yeah. So what's wrong? You know, and then, yeah. and I said, remember these, these problems, I, I would have been in your same case at your age, but these problems, even with, you know, 1,000, 1,600. Okay. So let's think of an actual plan. So you're, you're driving Uber. When are you doing this? Okay, cool. What else can you do here to, to now help? Okay. So let's run out all your transactions for the month. You do this, figure out what you're spending, figure out what you need to spend and figure out what you don't. Okay. Let's get that back. Okay. You take, yeah. Start off some su subscriptions. Don't eat pizza four times a week. Okay. There you go. Now we got another 300 bucks. Now you're down to 2000, whatever it is. And what else can you do? Maybe I don't know that Uber or Lyft, but maybe you add Lyft and you pick up another $50 a day or something. Okay. Now we got back, whatever, you know? And so just having the part where if you just start looking for a solution, because now, you know, you're, you're no longer just focused on the problem. You'll, you'll just, you'll continue to really just crush life. Yeah. I love it. Thank you so much. 
Jason has been an awesome conversation. I really appreciate it. And uh, again, my name is Abel Pacheco. I'm the host of Five Talents Podcast. And so if you heard something that brought you some value today, I would find it hard pressed not to. Uh, But if you did, I would say go to our podcast, please subscribe. That would be amazing. Go to Jason's podcast, subscribe over there, reach out to him. He'd love to, uh, to, to have someone else in his world and his following. And uh, we appreciate everybody's time. We hope to see you on the next show. And uh, thank you very much, Jason. You're the man. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Five Talents Podcast with your host, myself, Abel Pacheco. Each week, we're going to bring you interviews from industry experts and commercial real estate investors who follow their dreams and achieve massive success. Before you leave, let me ask you a few questions. Did you enjoy this episode? Did you learn something valuable? Was your mind stretched to what's possible and what you can achieve? Do you want other experts just like the one you heard today? If you answered yes to any or all of those questions, then please take a moment to subscribe to the Five Talents Podcast, give us a five-star rating, and most importantly, leave us a written review. Tell us what you liked, tell us your favorite guests, give us any feedback. I'm excited to learn and improve so you can get a more valuable show. So thank you again for subscribing to the Five Talents Podcast.